Hey everyone, how are you? Um, I awoke this morning in a somewhat pensive mood. I like that word, pensive. It's a good word, pensive. How are you, pensive? I was in a somewhat pensive mood. So I've been pensing. <laughs> and I'm in a thunk. I'm in a thunk. I've been on Twitter a good few years now, and I've been on the internet even longer. Probably longer, far longer than most of you. I was one of the first people in the country to get it because I was the national internet training manager for a company. One of the biggest when it started years ago. I was there at the groundbreaking ceremony for the, for the digging of the cable network. So I've been doing this techie thing for a while. I'm not a programmer by any stretch of the imagination, but I'm sort of better at using it than most, I think, and trying to get the new technologies under my belt as soon as possible. I've seen lots of things in that in that time but some terrible things some wonderful things and it's always been extraordinary from the moment i first watched the bayou tapestry appear on a screen when the when they when they invented html tim berners lee invented the world wide web before that we used to have to do it with things like ftp and irc and gopher and telnet i'm going right back so those of you that are old enough will be going oh bloody hell i haven't thought about them for ages there was no web pages when i started Everything was done in very strange ways. It was fast, still fascinating. But when HTML began to take hold, and we had very, very little ability to download. I mean, we had a 9.6K modem. So in other words, we had the lead in a pencil, whereas today we've got a great big gaping tunnel in terms of what we could get up and down on the internet. And I remember seeing the Bayou Tapestry appear. And it appeared in slivers. You would sit there and wait. That was just one picture appear like that bit by bit until eventually you got the whole thing and I visited a website and there was the bio tapestry it came up a bit at a time very slow <coughs> and I thought to myself dear god this is going to change the world and I wasn't wrong and it was phenomenal and it was exciting and it was extraordinary and from that point forward I've been fascinated by the cultural effects of something like the internet and by culture generally film is my big thing as you know game is also up there and I've been watching everything unfold on Twitter about what we're seeing going on in the country right now in the UK. And I do have one rather special thing in my life that, that has been gifted to me. It's not something that I've, I've automatically had. It's been gifted to me in, in my work that I do, which is that I get to see a group of people who have been directly affected by some of the stupid ideas flowing around the world right now. And I get to see them on a regular basis. And they're from all different parts of the world, from Ireland, <coughs> from Scotland, from Spain from america from australia from new zealand and these people my warrior my warrior teacher program um attendees give me a perspective a much needed perspective at times that that help in my thinking and my understanding and we talk about technologies and we talk about what technology is doing and how we're dealing with it and then we look at what's going on alongside that technology and it's the, the secret is this usually when a new technology appears gutenberg press being an example or even video for that matter. There'll be the howls for censorship from what I would what I would class as the, the sort of angry, frustrated aunt sat in the back of the car <laughs> who doesn't like what's happening. Don't like it! Who doesn't want anything to change, who is absolutely fixed in their ways, who is terrified by the concept of the removal of, um, or sorry, not, not the removal, of the uh, revelation that others don't think the way she does that's the first thing that makes me think about. Then it makes me back, um, think about the mad old uncle sat in the corner at Christmas. He's had a stroke that nobody talks to. Just sits there going, fuck, look at me, look at me. And moaning about everything in the world because, you know, he's having a hard time. And that's what I'm seeing on Twitter. These absolute insane people. Same on Facebook. Same on TikTok. It's on all of them. These absolutely insane people calling for censorship, calling for the shutting down of social media, calling for the stringing up of Elon Musk and his, and his, and his various other, these various other tech, big, tech, tech biggies, uh, because they simply don't like that what is being revealed to them. And, but then, like a car crash, they can't not watch. They have to watch. As what their belief system is about how the world is and how other people are, is torn to shreds in front of their eyes. Because they were lied to. They were lied to by other people for many, many years about what the reality of our situation in the UK was. And that despite the fact that we have a successful and culturally diverse country, 
that in the last few years we have seen, straight from academia, the implementation and the practice of hateful, dangerous theories designed to split us apart, to make us hate one another, to make us fight, to make us despair, to make us sad and to make us angry. That's what they're, that's what they're niffed about, is that because they thought they were the good guys, they're now being revealed that they're not the good guys. And what they've done is they've gone screaming straight to the authoritarian, ban everything. Let's cut off social media. Let's stop the far right. Right? I want to stop the far right too. And there's thugs all over the place from the far right doing what they're doing. And then there's thugs from other areas all over the place. The simple fact of the matter is that if you've gone, if you've resorted to violence, then you are you are an authoritarian. Violence is a tool of the authoritarian. And then I'm paused to think about the fact that they're now shouting for we need to shut down social media, we need the government needs to ban social media, they need to get a, get a grip and get people. And this is exactly what Starmer is going to do because you've handed it to, we've handed it to him on a plate. We've handed it to him on a plate. So they will attempt to censor as heavily as they can the, the various aspects of the internet. I mean, I think they'll fail in the end, but it doesn't mean that we aren't going to have to have a fight. We are going to have to have a fight. Because these people think it's end of times and they've gone so nuts and Starmer is just listening to these nutters and he's going, right, let's do it. His speech, would that he ended his speech saying, these are our values, safety, blah, 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 was absolutely chilling. Our values aren't safety. Our values are, our value is freedom, Kier. Our value is freedom. That's, that's, that's the British value. Doesn't matter who you are, if you're Britain, you're British. And that's the British value. Freedom from authoritarianism. And that's the fight that we currently have. And it's such nonsense that he's falling for it. And it's such nonsense that the people will fall for it. And it's such nonsense that people are calling for it. Because I remember how absolutely central social media was to the advent of the First World War, to the Second World War, to the atrocities of the Holodomor and the Holocaust, to the hideousness of Ceausescu, to what happened in Bosnia-Herzegovina, to what happened in Rwanda, Pol Pot, Mao, because all of that was just so awful because, of course, it was spread by social media, except it wasn't. We live in a world now where we try to address the atrocities of the 20th century. We're not in a world where we try to use the idea of a coming atrocity to censor. Social media didn't exist then and millions died. What makes you think this is about social media? It's utterly deranged. This is not about social media, it's about individual behaviour. And people are frightened. And they're frightened because they are, in a simple word, discombobulated. They are discombobulated by being surrounded by information, by being drowned in information, that because we are human, we can't not look like a car crash. But this is not a call. We do not call for that information to go. We call for what is necessary for people to survive in this world, which is a great big fat education program. And that education program should focus on our capacity for curiosity, critical thinking, and the ability to make a damn decision. Then we need to look at what it is that's unanchored us in this world of social media. And what has unanchored us is critical, critical social justice. Critical race theory, decolonization, trigger warnings, safe spaces, queer theory, gender identity ideology. If you wish to calm the country down, then you've got to get this nonsense out of the public square because it isn't social media that's causing all this. It's ideas that are causing all this. And some of those ideas are rotten. And we need a leadership and a leader that will tell us which ones and tell us why. And then we've got to start talking to each other about how we survive in a world where knowledge is everywhere, where information is everywhere. How do we swim through that sea of information? Perhaps we begin by, as humans, with doctors you've normally got, first you do no harm unless you're a gender doctor. And from our perspective as humans, perhaps we have to start saying to ourselves, what do I, what do I think? What do I know? What can I prove? That's a good place to start. Do I think the far right are on the streets of Britain? Yeah. Do I know that all of them are the far right? No. Can I prove 
that all of them are far right. No. In which case, that's a situation that requires nuance, understanding and investigation. It is not a situation in which the elites get to go, let's censor the internet, let's stop the people getting the information, let's prevent speech from happening. It's all Elon Musk's fault. The EU should pass a law. We need to grow up. There is no parent that's going to save us. These people are acting like petulant children who can no longer get their own way because somebody's taken their toys off them. Doesn't matter what your political hue is. This is a cultural fight. You're either here for freedom or you're here for the opposite, which of course is slavery. Pick your potato, because that's the future. That's the one we're heading for. Thanks to the warrior teachers for giving me perspective. As always, I'll see you later. Bye.